Hey guys, um, so welcome to the lab. Uh, it's obviously locked down to uh, COVID and all that stuff. So you're not physically here, but I am, um, which means I can show you this. So here we have copper carbonate, that's CU for copper, carbon, capital C, eight, which means it's got oxygen. So copper carbonate, which is CUCO3, CUCO3, copper carbonate. It's this beautiful green color. Uh, have you ever seen a, have you ever seen a, a house with copper a copper roof on it? Uh, the copper roof eventually goes green um, because it reacts with carbonic acid, which is just water with carbon dioxide dissolved in it. And it makes this beautiful green colour. You get asked in exams, what colour is copper carbonate? What colour is copper? What colour is copper carbonate? It's green. You have to say it's green. If you describe yourself aquamarine, I can't guarantee you're going to get the mark. You've got to say it's green. My colour perception isn't the best. And, you might call it something different, but it's green and that's the word you've got to use. It is green. Now, when you heat copper carbonate, it goes through a chemical reaction called thermal decomposition. Thermal meaning heat and decomposition meaning uh, it breaks down from one compound to make two or more products. So in this example, the copper carbonate, when you heat it up to about 200 degrees, uh, it forms copper oxide, which is black, and it releases a gas you've heard of before called carbon dioxide. You see the colour changing already? Now as the gas escapes, it lubricates between the particles and it makes it look like it's boiling. It's not boiling. We just have a, a lot of little tiny solid particles being pushed around by carbon dioxide working its way up and out through between the particles themselves. So it looks like it's boiling. Look at that. It's a very common misconception that people say, oh, it's boiling. Not boiling. What is it not doing? Yeah, it's not boiling. So this is forming copper carbonate and carbon dioxide. And we're going to end up with a black powder at the end of it. There's no change in state. It is a chemical reaction. The giveaway or giveaways for it being a chemical reaction is we've got a change in colour. It hasn't finished changing colour yet, but it's still doing it. Uh, it's forming a gas. Uh, if we were to record its mass at the beginning, with our copper carbonates and then record the, look at the gas coming off that bubbling away. And then record, the, if I hold it a bit closer, you might be able to see it bubbling away. Uh, and if we record the mass at the end of the copper oxide, you find the mass is less, and the mass is less. Look at that, it's all gas is going on. Mass is less because you've lost the mass of the gas as well. I keep keeping it up, and in a minute it will be completely black because it will all have gone through thermal decomposition, it's all decomposed. And I'll tip some out on the bench mat. I'll move the camera so you can see it. And you'll see it is definitely just a black powder. Oh, look at that. So to recap once more, we start off with copper carbonate, CuCO3. It changes to copper oxide, CuO, and carbon dioxide. So CuCO3 breaks down to CuO, and that leaves you with one, car one, oh, go, one carbon and two oxygens, which is CO2. So you have copper carbonate, copper oxide, and carbon dioxide. Start with copper carbonate and you arrange, rearrange the particles to make copper oxide and carbon dioxide. And I'm not going to do a second take of this because I have a lot of work to do. Right, let's go down here. Look at that, there it is. And that's our black powder just there. That's our copper oxide. Okay? Right. Back to the studio. With thermal decomposition, you start off with a single compound. Okay? You heat that up and the, uh, the compound, the molecule, uh, it falls apart. And it gives you two or more different chemicals. So you end up with, you start off with one thing and you end up with two other things. Or maybe more. Uh, picture it like Lego bricks all stuck together. You make a model um, and then you, you take your model and you heat it up. So remember, you're heating up particle models. So it vibrates around and your model breaks. Oh dear. And you've got two bits of model, maybe more. Maybe there's bits of bricks and stuff all over the place. Uh, you, you've just simulated thermal decomposition. Oh, I've used colour here to, to try and remind you what the colours are in this, this, uh, this chemical reaction. Copper carbonate is green. Copper oxide is black. So we start with a green compound. We heat it and it forms copper oxide and carbon dioxide. 
So that's CuCO3, one copper, one carbon, three oxygens, to make copper oxide, one copper, one oxygen, and carbon dioxide, that's one carbon and two oxygens. And this interestingly balances straight away, you don't have to do anything with it. There's one copper here, there's one copper there. There's uh, one carbon on the left, there's one carbon on the right, there's three oxygens on the left, and we've got three oxygens on the right, which is a nice added bonus.